Uh, where do you where do we begin? Oh. I think that's the goal there, to be honest. That that hockey was phenomenal. Oh, we're sponsored by Well a man. A man can dream, wow, but we're moving on to the second round against the Battle of Alberta. Let's go! Hey, Bruce, there it is. Bruce, there it was. St. Louis decided to just blow up completely in the trade deadline. I wish it wasn't Adam Fox. <laughs> the jugger, it's two juggernauts just colliding with each other. If he doesn't beat Tampa in the first round, he's out of a job. What? Weird. Boom. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Puck and Stuff podcast where we talk about Puck and other stuff. I'm here with my boy B-Dog and I'm T-Dog. How you doing today? Good, sir. I'm doing pretty good on this side of the mic. We have been going off crazy with the content lately, so I hope you guys do enjoy the content we're pulling out for you guys right now, and thank you so much for all the support you guys give. Today is not an off-season talk. Today is a standings prediction. We hey. hopefully have enough from free agency to finally actually take a decent chance of what we think the predictions will be for this division. Today's division, we will be doing the Metropolitan. So, this should be a fun one. This should be a fun Pretty one. Pretty solid. <laughs> well, I have to ask, how did we do last year? Okay, Probably so last well. year, T-Dog and I obviously made some standing predictions for last year together. And what we had last year was in eighth place, we had the Flyers. Seventh, the Islanders. The sixth was the Devils. Fifth was Columbus, fourth was Washington, third was Pittsburgh, second was Carolina, and first was the Rangers. That was our predictions. What actually <laughs> was up in the season was Columbus being last, Philly, Washington, Pittsburgh, Islanders, Rangers, Devils, and Carolina taking first in the division. So we had the right teams, I think, that would be at the top, just I... I it's just Some of them a little like like Washington and Phil or Columbus. Oh my goodness! Why did I think Columbus would be that high? Why would we think that Devils would be that low? Oh my gosh! Yeah. So hopefully, since T yeah. and I have been obviously talking about so much news on the off season, maybe we can get a little bit more accurate with this. So. T Dog, I'm going to start off with you. What do you think the Metropolitan will turn out to be this coming up season? All right, okay, so I'm going to do my full list here. I'm going to go from number eight all the way to number one. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, my number one. Feel it, just kidding. I'm going to number eight. Haha. <laughs> so, number eight, the Philadelphia Flyers. Then it goes to number seven, which will be the Columbus Blue Jackets. The number six will be the Washington Capitals. Number five will be the New York Islanders. Number four, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Number three, the New York Rangers. Number two, the Carolina Hurricanes. And number one, the New Jersey Devils. Yes, but Brad. Yes, but Brad. <laughs> yes, but Brad. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Actually, I don't mind that list so far. So giving uh, my prediction for the Metropolitan, I got the Flyers at eight, the Islanders at seven, the Columbus Blue Jackets at six, the Capitals at five, the New York Rangers at four, the Pittsburgh Penguins at three, Carolina number two, and the Devils at number one. We're the devil. So. <laughs> the devil. That was, that was out of nowhere, man. <laughs> oh, my. So that. why do you think Philadelphia is so low, man? Um, well, honestly, if we look. <laughs> it's a no brainer, dude. If we look at what Philly's <laughs> done all season, they've just. Tuck, basically completely tucking it apart they got they got a really nice draft prospect in Mitchkov, but realistically they really doesn't look like they're competing for anything except the first overall pick that they'll botch again yeah pretty much uh for me yeah philly for being number eight it's like my forehead right now not a good luck so the thing with philadelphia is they didn't do too much of what they should you're right. Drafting has been a struggle. Um, they know where they're at, and I respect that. But they're trying to change it with a jersey change instead of actually changing your roster. 
I mean, if it works, it works. <laughs> Playing Jersey, but it doesn't fix but, anything. You know, I mean, I'm surprised like, you haven't lost Connecting yet, but you know, a lot of your players have left. Um, what's going to happen with Carter Hart? There's a lot of these questions. Um, the roster definitely is a one that has a lot of young players, and so they're going to get their playing time, which is good. And some of them deserve it. They're they have some underrated prospects. Problem is, is do you have a superstar? Uh, your goalie has he always been? Is he able to be consistent? We'll see. I think that Cal Peterson, uh, signing might help. Peterson did struggle a little bit, a lot. Five millions, a lot. <laughs> Hart, he's got the he's got the uh the potential. But it's just the forwards, right? It's like really, it's just connect me. Yeah, you know, you're in, you're in the dumpster still. That's the reality of it. It's tank time in Philly, so you guys get the last spot because you probably have the best odds out of this division right now to get the first overall pick. So maybe you saying. guys win that lottery, maybe not. But I guess we'll just have to see. I think we'll jump to number seven here. T Dog, who was your number seven again? You said it was Columbus, correct? It was Columbus. And so I'm going to put Columbus at number seven, where I'm thinking maybe they could go up and up a little bit just by one, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have tr- much trust right now. And I think, you know, you are getting some of your players back, but a lot of your players are still injury ridden. Well, a lot of great prospects, and these prospects are going to be phenomenal players but they need to develop, so you got to let that happen. This is going to be the year you're going to let them develop and everything. I'm a little concerned about Merch Lincolns. I don't think he's able to do a full, just the one, number one starter. I think Merch Lincolns is good in a 1A, 1B situation, but that's not really a thing that will probably happen here. Tarasov does have a lot of potential, but I think Merch Lincolns takes most of that. Wow. And then, of course, you have... Wierenski injured and Jake Bean and Dan Forth. Yeah, I don't know. The defense is nice, but uh, I don't think it's going to help with the lack of scoring that I think they'll have. I think they will. I think they will have a lack of scoring. I know it's weird seeing Goudreau and Liney there, but besides that, not much. Well, I, I definitely got to say, I, I definitely didn't put Columbus there for sure. I put the New York Islanders at seven because they really didn't make a huge bunch of splashes during the free agency obviously like again i think bull horvat enough in the trade deadline was a really good pickup for the islanders it did kind of help them by the end of the season pushing for that playoff spot but again you you versed a very tough team in carolina and you got booed at first round so i don't know what uh their plan realistically is because again you didn't do much you decently had a you had a decent draft for sure but you, you guys don't really look like contenders. So maybe that's why I kind of thought maybe you guys have a really bad season, like a down season compared because you guys look, I mean, okay, let's be honest. Sorokin is still there and Sorokin is still a terrifying goalie. But realistically, if you look at the Islanders, they don't have a whole lot else other than Matt, Matt Barzell and those defensive pieces that are getting older and older. That's why I thought like, if anything, that's why I would put Columbus at six because Columbus looks a little bit more promising, especially with the addition at the draft with Adam Ventelli. And I think he could have a really good season if they put up, if they decide to put him in the NHL roster. And like you said, they actually did upgrade a few pieces on the defensive side with Provenov. And like, they just look like a more compelling team than the Islanders or the Flyers realistically do. So like it, I think that's why I'll keep them at six. They could jump up to five, but I'll give my reason for the Capitals in a bit. So, um, let's go sure. with your number six. Yeah. So mine's the Capitals. The uh, reason being is they didn't do too much of a change. Uh, Edmondson is there. That might be one of their new additions. But, um, I think here's the thing: they're not really aiming anyways because really they're kind of sacrificing for Ovechkin's um. Uh, uh, milestone chase right with the Gretzky goal record yeah and they'll probably uh, feel that soon but how I see it is with this team it's pretty much the same as last season and I honestly think it'll be a worse season than before I they struggled yeah they struggled more than I think most people thought and I, I don't see much 
progression with this. There wasn't really any changes to me to show that. Now, I feel bad for saying that because Darcy Kemper's a phenomenal goalie and he won a cup for a reason. And yeah. a lot of these players, right, the, like these are some star players, you know, they probably deserve to go on a team that can contend and try and win another cup. But I think a lot of these want to stay and maybe help Obi or something. But them, tr- the entire team and organization trying to get behind the Obi goal record, which is awesome. We love it as fans. But it's going to affect the team a lot. Yeah. And I have no idea what their <laughs> their prospect pooling looks like. But, uh, I mean, Crystal's not bad. You have Hendrick Lapierre, McMichael. So, a, decent, a few decent ones. It's just, I don't see any really difference, any change that could persuade me to think that they're going to be better. Yeah, honestly, I got to agree. And that's why, I, I mean, they probably will be a little bit more competitive than Columbus. That's why I put them at my number five for sure. I mean, like like you said, Obi's still trying to break that Gretzky record. And I think I that Ovechkin alone will be a reason why you still want to be a good contender. And that's why they gave the ridiculous contract to Tom Wilson. And like you said, Darcy Kemper is a very talented goalie, like for those reasons of winning a cup with Colorado before he left. And I don't think it'll be enough. They're still good enough to be competitive, but... Again, you look at these other four teams that we're going to mention soon, and they just they blow it out of the water of contention compared to what Washington Washington is nowadays. So I'll give you uh, what's number five for you. So it's the Islanders. Ah. My reason being similar to Washington, not much change. Yes, the Horvat deal during the uh, during last season is something that was a nice little uh, addition for them, but I don't. To me, the Islanders are the definition of insanity. And it's because it seems like it's been the same team, same core for so long. And nothing's really come out of it besides a few first round losses and maybe missing the playoffs. The only saving grace for me is Sorokin. Yeah. If he can just have an absolute, like, uh, Vesna season, well, they can make the playoffs. I mean, they could. Again, like, <sighs> Lou Lamorello, you. You got to change some things up because it's, to me, again, definition of insanity, it's the same thing over and over. Eventually, you got to do something to change it because it's like the Flames, man. It's just mediocrity is in your middle name because it's it's, it's just been the same consistently. Like, I don't see anything to change it because nothing has changed. Would you agree with that? Yep. So, not going to lie, it has not changed. So, yeah, that's how I see it. And Islanders... I'm not going to lie that you're not going to be playoff favorites for me up until you start doing something to retool a little bit because, I mean, do it because Sorokin, that's a good gift that you have. So, Actually, I would probably say the only thing that truly changed in New York was instead of Jonathan T- uh, John Tavares being the main center there, it's just now Matt Barzell. That's it. Barzell's a great – you know, I wonder if Barzell would be a little more star setting on another team. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, you know, a more offensive minded team that could even help too if they changed up their their uh, their play style a little bit. But yeah, that's where I have them. Yeah, for sure. And I think we'll jump to. I'm going to jump to number four. And I did say the New York Rangers, and you're probably like, really, you have Pittsburgh in the top three. I don't know, man. Adding another defenseman like Carlson to the Pens is very nice. And plus, if we go to number f- who my number four is, the Rangers, I think they've been kind of going downhill a little bit since last season with the playoff loss to the Devils. And they probably didn't, didn't want to lose to the Devils at all. I still think the Rangers are a very competitive team. Obviously, I think they will still make that playoff run. But I, a playoff. A good playoff run doesn't start with just regular season standings. Let's be honest here. You don't have to be a top team in your standings to win a cup. That's been proven so many times. But I think maybe this could give the Rangers a little bit of that uh, grind to want to win. Because now you're a lower standing. That means you're versing higher teams in your conference. And that could give you a little bit more grit of, oh, these guys are probably looking down on us since we were supposed to be known as the one of the best teams in the East, but you fell a little bit short in standings. So this could go really well for the Rangers in playoff standings. But if we're going predictions, I think those three, those four teams are going to make playoffs for sure. But mm-hmm. 
I think the Rangers maybe get that wild card spot if anything. Okay. That'd be weird to see them in a wild card spot. See, I see Pittsburgh if they're I could see them either making it or not making it. It could determine on a few things. Pittsburgh will be number four for me, so we kind of flip this here. Yeah. Now the addition of Eric Carlson is awesome. Just don't see it being a factor that could for sure get them to that playoff spot. I really think it depends on staying healthy and being consistent. They might have to be a team that has, has a really good early start in the season to get there. Cause I think what Pittsburgh could do is play good and then maybe have like a, a really bad streak in the month of January or December. But the problem is if you do that and then you still have, let's say a, a 500 record, you really like lessen your chances to make the playoffs. That was kind of like uh, Calgary. Yeah. You know, my closest uh, or my to recent memory of, of of recollection to comparison. But Pittsburgh could. Um, when I think about Pittsburgh, I mean, goal, let's look at goaltending, right? So Nadelkovich is now going to be your backup, pretty solid backup. They trust Jari. Um, as, as but another thing I, I I'm worried about too, Gensel's injured probably till November, December. That yeah, I think really for the first month, you. I think a verse, verse month and a half, he's out. Yeah, that's that will really affect you. And I do, they're top heavy. I like their top six. They are aging, but remember, like Crosby and Malkin are different beasts. They're still really good at their jobs. Yeah, just don't know how I feel about that bottom. I like Rem I like Achari, O'Connor, Nylander, Nieto. I, I, I I could I could see it be a little better. Defense doesn't look terrible. Ryan Graves was a great pickup as well, you know. Uh, and then Carlson Latang, Marcus Pedersen, uh Pierre Olivier Joseph, then Rue Weedle, and then Ty Smith. I I I that's not bad. I, I just see it as I think depending on the scenario of what happens in the season, it'll determine if they make it or not. And like I said, it's gonna determine on good early start, uh not having maybe bad streaks and health being healthy yeah i well good goaltending go good goaltending too because jari really struggled for a little bit and so he needs to definitely step it up i think i think the reason why i put pittsburgh at number three hey i think it is based on jari's performance this season as well because he didn't perform too bad last season but i think injuries also was a big cause of obviously their like season kind of going down the hill a little bit for sure but I feel like if you had Jari and net for a majority of the season, you could make that top three spot for sure. And you got to love the additions they added to the defense, like Ryan Greaves and even Carlson alone, because now if you just look, pretend, pretend Jake Gensel isn't injured. If you look at that starting lineup of Gensel, Crosby, and I don't, do they put Malcolm with them? You think, or did they He's drop in a... second? I think Raquel uh, okay. plays there. I could be wrong, but basically, yeah. If you're really looking at the star potential that Pittsburgh now has with Crosby, Malkin, Gensel, Carlson, Latang, like the list kind of goes down. And I think you really just have to look at Pittsburgh with what Kyle Dubas did to them, because it's those last golden years of what you have left with Crosby and Malkin. And you could even see that with Carlson now, because obviously Carlson's on a contender and he's around very veteran star players like Chris Latang and those two in general. So that's why I said, maybe they push up the third because imagine that team healthy all year long Crosby played 82 games Malcolm played 82 games Carlson played 82 games that's still a really good team on paper and once Crosby I feel like once they get the 90 point mark again yeah exactly with that kind of team like 100 points with San Jose that's impressive impressive alone but once you put them with stars different story mm-hmm. and I think once they kind of get through that tough terrain of not having Gensel there for a month and like a month or two once they get past that and he's back in the lineup, this team could look seriously deadly. And I'm not too worried about the the depth pieces either because if you're in a really good spot coming trade deadline, you could easily give up some picks to do that. Because again, you don't want to waste these chances that you have left with Crosby and getting another cup. Definitely. I, think- I mean, that's probably the biggest reason why they went for uh, Carlson. Exactly. Like I, I think they really did improve this team pretty well especially on the defensive end in the last offseason. So 
dude, they might be the winners of the <laughs> offseason. You are definitely more positive on them than I am personally, but I, I could see them having a little success. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I guess we'll see. Uh, it's so just number a three, like how I said, we switched Rangers. Nothing too, too crazy about what they did in the offseason. Uh, Wheeler is an addition for them. So you are getting, same with Nick Benino. So you are getting veteran leadership that could help with the young guys. I feel that what might affect them is last season. Yeah. I have a feeling the confidence might be shaken up a little bit. Maybe not Shesterkin, but like they're the team itself. I, I mean, I guess we don't know until the season goes. Shesterkin, I think, will just play on his head like usual. So, I mean, that alone will get them some solid positioning in the seed. But I think these other two teams are just going to be hungrier and going to be, be just overall better in the regular season. But there's nothing wrong with the Rangers. They still have Panarin. You still have Zimbabwe, Kreider, Trocek, Heedle, Goudreau. Goudreau, what you need, and literally, and I wonder if, if if the kid line became what they supposed to be. I wonder if that would actually make them a top five team in the league. Yeah, I, I keep saying this every year, and I don't think it's going to happen now because I, I keep saying it, and it doesn't happen. And I keep saying, uh, Lafreniere is going to do it. He's going to do it. He hasn't done it yet. I'll I pick him in wonder, fantasy this year. I just, yeah, you, yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll pick <laughs> him and he'll get 800 points. He'll get an 80 point season easy. <laughs> I picked him, what, twice now? Yeah. I think I have. Yeah, I have. Yeah. So I think with you and I, you and I both have the same teams in the same spot yeah. so i think you and i will have a little bit of back and forth conversation with this as our number twos was carolina mm -hmm. carolina obviously has looked like a deadly team since the conference until they get to the conference finals and then they completely botch out <laughs> um i think again this team has the capability to go to a finals i really think this could be their year they do it you and I have seen what they've done with their defensive core. They just amped it up even more with that Caleb Jones signing. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, oh. Caleb Jones. God yeah. damn. They look like true contenders now. But no, realistically, this team is still looks like a finals team. Their young core is starting to age into their primes. So now this is looking like one of their best seasons to potentially do something and win a cup but i think it also is kind of debating on if frederick anderson can stay healthy mm -hmm. and come playoff time hell if i was their coach i would personally say frederick anderson you're not playing the last 10 games of the season stay healthy for playoffs because we don't need it so yeah that's what i would personally say lucky for them they have the ability that he doesn't have to play the full like 70 games he could probably play like 60 games yeah, and Kuchekov yeah. Aranta can, like, you know, uh, handle some of that weight, which will be really good for them. Carolina, they're going to make the playoffs no matter what. We know this. Now, to me, it's uh, – they need to just make sure to not get too overconfident in the regular season. Because you still want a really good spot, right? You want to get your home advantage, especially in a place like Carolina where the fans are just phenomenal, just outstanding fans, right? And you, So you want the home ice advantage. So watch out for that, I think. I think watch out, like I said, watch out for um, maybe being a little too overconfident. But this will make the playoffs. Uh, just, I mean, this re-signing of Aho, that's what you needed to do. I wonder if Pesci leaves. If Pesci leaves, that's going to suck a lot. Oh, true. But you can get a great return. They do have, they do have some leverage to that. So we'll see what happens with that, but. Love the Orlov signing. If Orlov can play like he did in Boston, oh my goodness. Carolina's defense, they can do it all, man. They can do it oh. all. But I really do, yeah, love. It. There's, there's, and there's a lot of experience on this team. Like, there's, there's some cup finals experience, there's deep playoff run experience, and there's just age experience. That's going to really help those young guys. Seth Jarvis, oh, yeah, he's another one that might be on the thing. Or, yeah, no, it was him, but like, there's just so many. Um, I could see Aho eventually hitting 100 points. I don't yeah. know if it's going to be this season, but it could be soon. It could be very soon with his uh, game play getting better every year. And obviously, he's getting the experience because he's growing to that prime right now. So mm -hmm. that 100 makes sense. 100% makes sense to me. And I think we'll jump to our number one spot, which we both put as the New Jersey Devils. The Devils! Yeah. 
So yes, 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 yes. Yes, I think I would love to hear your opinion. Of why do you think the New Jersey Devils will finish on top of the Metropolitan? I think they're going to be like Boston of last season. Not like that crazy of a season, but I, to me, Not the like Devils are going to be... I think, I think the Devils are going to be the number one team in the league. Yeah. I, I think that they're just going to be on fire, which might affect them because, right, we, President's Trophy Curse might be a thing, but your addition to Toffoli... They have so much goal scoring ability. It's disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. My like Meyer, Hughes, yes, but that he sure as your as your captain in a depth center now. Like it's crazy. Like our second line center, mm. Palat, Pafoli, Paula, McLeod, Bastion, Lazar, Thomas Nosek, Dawson Mercer, Nolan Foot, and Chris Tierney, and then do their defensive, defensive, defensive. Hamilton, who's a power play legend. John Marino, Jonas Siegenthaler, who is so good, so good. Colin Miller, Brendan Smith, Kevin Ball, and Luke Hughes, who, you know, give, give a few more years, man. Luke Hughes is going to be, uh, yeah, he's going to oh, give defenseman. Quinn Hughes a reason to come over to New Jersey, that's for sure. He's going but to get too, like Their goalie situation is also really good. Vanacek and Akira Schmidt could just come out of nowhere again and just, you know, pull up a, cal- a calorie run, you know? It's very yeah. possible. This team has the assets in all aspects of their team to just – absolutely bomb a nice multiple 10 game win streaks and just run with it you know yeah like they're gonna be so freaking good this season it's just not gonna be funny man they're just gonna they're gonna score so many goals Hughes I you know what let's look at this right now Hughes will get 100 points Meyer will get 80 Bratt will get 84 Keisha will get in 70 70 plus Toffoli will score 35 yeah, he'll score 35. He'll and probably get a 50. He'll probably get a 50 point season. They're gonna get about four to five 30 goal scorers. Yeah. I think I think Hughes will get 40 goals. So yeah, they're fine. They're gonna be good. I just I wonder what they're gonna be like in the playoffs. That's yeah. my biggest uh, concern, but I'm curious too with that, especially because like oh, they got to the second round against Carolina and they got out, right? If yeah. I'm yeah, so I think my reasoning with the Devils be, being first over Carolina is because, dude, Car- uh, New Jersey is what Carolina was a few years ago, a deep, hungry, young team of superstars ready to try becoming the beast of the East. And I think New Jersey has built their team so well in the last few years that this is finally the team that could come and win something if it wants to. But I the playoff... How they will perform in playoffs is a big question for sure, because maybe they get a little bit cocky with the president's trophy if they win it and the good performance all season. And then maybe playoffs, they botch it. But if we're just talking about predictions and standings, I think New Jersey will probably come out one of the best teams in the East and yeah, take over first, dude. Like I think the only thing that could truly like possibly just collapse everything new for New Jersey this season is their goaltending because Vanacek has, I feel like Vanacek is kind of known for having really good seasons. And then the next season he has a little bit of off season. So mm-hmm. who okay. knows what like can happen. Nebraska, with that. Yeah. yeah it, like it has happened with goalies before, but other than that, if you really look at New Jersey, they look stellar on every point. I think they are uh Martin Broder away from a cup. Like I can't even make fun of their bottom six. Yeah, like it's it, actually solid, and for the mo- amount of money you're paying too, like just outstanding, man. Yeah, they got some I, good I, contracts. Oh man, they're gonna be so good. We'll have to watch them with interest. I'm gonna have to get a Devils jersey, I guess. Hey. Eh? Yes, you'll have to get the Devils jersey for sure. But hey, guys, that is our Metropolitan uh, standing predictions. I how bad are they? How great are they? Are they going to be exact? Probably not. I guess we'll just have to see in the next coming weeks when the NHL season starts. So if you guys did enjoy this episode, please leave a like, leave a comment, and please subscribe. We love the support we get every day from you guys. We couldn't ask for any better fans. We love you all. And D Dog, wrap this up. Alrighty, like B-Dog said, thank you very much for listening, watching, however you are consuming this content. If you did like it, smash that like button, uh, comment down below as well, comment question of the day. Uh, who's more correct, me or B-Dog? Let us know in the comments below. And hey guys, almost there. So I think we'll do, I don't know what we'll do next. 
you let us know guys actually comment down below sh uh, what division should we do next and we'll do that for the next episode all right sound good perfect all right guys we'll see you in the next one take care and remember eat your vegetables have a good one peace peace